Hello, fellow engineers, and welcome back to Polybridge 3. Today, we'll be building more real bridges that were your suggestions in the previous video. So what I did, I went through and I added all your suggestions to... Hang on. Can you build a bridge between my parents so they love each other again? Ooh. I'll tell you what, mate. Since you asked nicely, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> these are terrifying. So we just want a nice bit of road between these. Boosh. Then we do a little bit of that. A little bit of this. Then we end up with that. So if we press play and zoom out. Oh, we did it. We fixed the marriage. <laughs> Oh, see, that is the power of engineering. What I actually did with all your suggestions was add them to the Wheel of Bridge Tune, which, of course, we'll then spin and then you guys won't get to see the answer. Uh, but I, of course, will. So we'll be heading to the sandbox and we'll be building this real bridge. You guys got to try and guess. Now, for this one, we are heading to the United States of America. And this is actually of the bridges that remain, the second oldest steel bridge in the US. And this is in a city, so it's a fairly, fairly urban bridge. So the way this bridge starts is it's on it's on a little bit of a curve. And I mean, to be honest, it looks like it actually curves like uphill. It's a bridge that climbs uphill, sort of like that. Hang on, let me just turn the grid on and then I can line this up so it's completely tangent to that top. Nice, though, to be honest, I may want to move that back a bit. And then here, add some foundations. Because once I push that road into place, shove a foundation there. And I think I just want to do like a sort of similar curve over that way. Push. I mean, it's actually supported by like a single girder, but you can't really do that in this game. So we'll just do a little truss like that underneath. Okay, then in the middle, we have another foundation like that. So that's sort of our main span. We've got another span of the same length. And then if we just move this to the right a bit, shove the foundation there, wang the same truss underneath, then we're almost ready to go. But uh, before we put our main part in, we need to we need to come into the blueprint menu. We've then got some pillars we need to add. So we need to cover these foundations with pillars and then make them, I guess, sort of five meters tall and then add an anchor up the top as well. So then we just duplicate that over to this side. Add some rocks to support the foundations. And then we're probably at the point where you can start guessing. Because as I build this, some bridge experts slash American people may recognize this. Particularly if you've ever been to or near Pittsburgh. A place absolutely full of bridges, I might add. But yeah, we're going to be building in hydraulics. Although there are no hydraulics that we're going to actually be moving. But let's just do that. I want to copy that to the middle. And one to this end as well. And then I want to grab my my curvy tool, go across to there, and then curve that down. I think I actually want to unlock tangents. I think the curve sort of works like on a horizontal plane, if that makes sense. But anyway, I can try and make sure we're bang on in the middle. All right, and then I've realized these are a little bit tall, so I, I will have to move these down probably two grid squares. All right, so basically we end up with a U shape like that. So if I take pieces straight up to intersect with that line, then just make sure all these are stretched out because we want them to be blue. Yes, you make all this architecture, but that's just how it is. We're then left with that. So we now want to do hydraulics between all of these down to these bottom pieces as well. Again, make them all do that so they're blue. Then we want to try and copy this road to the middle. So we end up with that. We can then replace all of these with hydraulics as well. Then we want to do the straight up supports like we had underneath. And basically what we're trying to make is something called a lenticular truss bridge where we sort of end up with a lens shape. So we sort of just need to grab all of this, copy, and then flip horizontal, flip vertical, and basically bung one of them on top. Now, because this is on a curve, I've made it very, very tricky on myself. I can't just copy that. But I reckon it's probably close enough to start with, and then I can just tweak afterwards. So if we turn the grid off, remember, we got to move only vertically for most of these. But uh, that's not too bad. However, you'll probably notice this ain't going to be very strong because there's lots of squares, meaning all these corners can move. I mean, if I press play. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, if we watch from the front angle, check that out. So yeah, we do need to add the cross braces. And so I'll do these in steel to start with just so you can see like where they go. But basically, they're just going between all these. Now, because they're so tall, we're going to have to line tool, fill in and then move that 
down to meet there. I mean, actually, I should probably do that with the first one as well. But essentially, if we go through and do that for all of these, then we end up with that. And then when we press play, look, now it supports itself because the power of triangles. So I'll now go through and just make all of these blue. And then we're pretty much there. We just got to do the other truss. And I won't lie, I wish I didn't do this on the curve because I can't just copy that one annoyingly. But after a bit of jiggery pokery, we have finished the bridge. And so you can see this is a two span one. You see each sort of disc looks like a lens. Hence lenticular truss. And let's just add a, I don't know, Pittsburgh. Is that like, I feel like that's probably lots of trucks and stuff, right? But yeah, we'll add that and then we'll take a look at the final bridge. So there it is. And this is the Smithfield Street Bridge in Pittsburgh. Uh, built between 1881 and 1883. And yeah, as I said before, still standing. So one of the oldest steel bridges in the US still. Uh, let's have a look at this with the stress on. Oh, wow. Look at that bit in the middle. You are very stressed, mate. So if we slow this right down, you can sort of see how the force is distributed. So mostly it's along these curved parts. Now this top piece will be acting in compression because it arches up as the force is pulled down. It's basically all these pieces are going to be crushed together. Whereas underneath this, this curve is going to be acting in tension. Uh, this piece in the middle, <laughs> it's so red. I think that's because... Well, basically, the entire weight of the left and right bridge uh, is being crushed as that's sort of smashing down into this foundation. But yeah, as we speed up, you can see the forces. As we get to the middle, they're going to be the most force on these end pieces. But uh, oh, that bit failed. My bad. And before we go on to the next level, let's just come to modifiers. We'll turn on unbreakable. We will add a hydraulic phase at the start. And then when we press play, oh my goodness. <laughs> Can our truck still make it across the bridge? <laughs> Fair play. It's actually, it is going for it. Okay, it got stuck. But uh, let's just watch that again. It's like something out of nightmares. Like the, the really jagged movement was terrifying. Anyway, but yeah, cool bridge that one. Shall we move on to the next one? So I've loaded up the wheel of bridge tune again. Let's give it a spin and see what we get this time. Except you won't. Okay, so this is going to be a cool one. We've got we've to get right down to sort of water level. And again, sorry other nationalities, but we are back in the US for this one. There's a lot of bridges in the US. So he's a racist. That's his problem, not mine. Okay, and the way that this one varies from others that I've built is it's a moving bridge. It's actually a lift bridge. So rather than a drawbridge that sort of works by like doing that to go up, a lift bridge. So you got your two spans like that. A lift bridge, the middle bit actually lifts up vertically like that. And anyone that's been following my Polybridge 3 campaign playthrough... Well, no, I'm not too good at the old movement. Anyway, for this, I'm actually doing shorter bits of road than usual, just because of how the trusses work on this. Okay, so annoyingly with this one, I am building this out of hydraulics just for the color again. Uh, but since there is movement, we are going to actually have to move hydraulics, which means I'm going to probably have to use the hydraulic controller and tell all of these not to move. Otherwise, it'll end up an absolute mess. Anyway, I need another foundation to go there. And then from this point is where we build our sort of lift part. So we sort of build a straight up truss like that. And then because this is going to be taking the weight of like a road in front of it down here, the supports do lean back a bit. Oh, actually, they look pretty spot on, don't they? Yeah, we can just fill that with road. So we end up with that. Next up, we need to add our split joint. So we press J on there. But first, I need a hydraulic phase. So that needs to go before the car goes and another one after. All right, so on the split joint, I want that disconnected. I then need to build a truss under here for the actual bridge. Then I can just copy that across like that. And then there's sort of a little, a little blob like that. So that wants to be connected to, to that little one too. Okay, so if we press play, you can see that drops. Oh my goodness, I haven't, I haven't fixed those yet. So in the hydraulic controller for phase one, I basically need to untick all of these, all of these hydraulics. Actually, just let's just remove all. That's a lot easier, Matt. We'll do the same for that one as well. Uh, but we do want that joint to split. So now when we press play, you can see the bridge drops in the middle. Perfect. If I do a straight line from up there down to there, I can then slide this to get lots of pieces. And then go boosh. So that's now filled with loads of hydraulics. And they should work. But if we if we make this even on the other side. So let's just move that over there a bit. 
You want to copy that, flip it to that side, bung it there. Just make sure everything's connected properly. Add foundations in. And then in the hydraulic controller, we can say, all right, I want all of you to move all of you on this pier as well. Then exactly the same on the one after. So it should come back down after it goes up. All right, then I'm just going to cross brace all of this stuff. Just because there's there's a lot of trussage going on on the real bridge. And I, I want this to look exactly as it looks in real life. Whilst hopefully working. So the real test, if we grab a boat, what shall we shove in? It's going to be a steamboat coming. I don't actually know if this will go high enough. But basically the boat needs to go between the two hydraulic phases. Then the car goes at the end. But if we press play, you can see how this works. So the car goes first, gets across. Then the, the hydraulics come up, which lifts the entire bridge deck up. And then, oh no, that boat's too big. That boat's too big. Thankfully, there is a scaler. So let's make it a bit smaller. So we'll just add a few of the extra bits and bobs in here. Do a bit of that. Say boosh. All right, and then there we have it. The Portage Lake Lift Bridge which is actually called the Horton-Hancock Bridge because it connects the cities of Hancock and Horton in the US state of Michigan. And this bridge usually has a clearance in the middle of just four feet above the water. But when the middle bit lifts up, it goes to 100 feet. That's 30 meters. Now, this is actually a double deck bridge. The bottom used to be a railway, just a single track. But uh, that was abandoned in 1982. Uh, and this opened in 1959, by the way. So yeah, pretty cool bridge. I probably didn't do the actual like mechanical stuff how you're how you're meant to, but whatever. I mean, it works. I definitely didn't have to shrink the boat for it to fit underneath. I mean, yeah, I like that one. Really cool. Different different sort of bridge to build in this game as well. I like it a lot. Anyway, let's spin up the Wheel of Bridge Tune one more time. Let's go. Okay. Oh, so for this next one, we are heading to Mexico. Yeah, and I do actually remember seeing something about this when it was like made. I think it was made in... Hang on, let me just look. Yeah, it was finished in 2003 and there were some controversies around it because it spans a river. However, the river is dry most of the year. Now, generally, this is a complaint that people that sort of don't understand how anything works... <laughs> Because it doesn't matter how often that river does actually have flowing water in it. It's the fact that it does have water in it that we need to avoid it. Otherwise, our roads will be washed out throughout the year. And then you won't be able to drive to the supermarket or wherever you want to drive. So I've got some terrain in. So you can see we got a little river down there. Annoyingly, this monster truck does actually make it most of the way. Although apparently it went underwater, so the level is failure. Therefore, bridge required. Yeah, but since this is it's another cable stayed bridge, but it's a bit more architectural, shall we say. Uh, so what I was thinking, perhaps I will draw the pier in a custom shape. Now I can turn off collide with vehicles so that vehicles can drive past it. Can I decide what's that? Oh, that's thickness. Okay, I can say how thin I want it. So let's just do one meter and let's just have a look. Ah, it's nice and thin. And cars drive straight through. Okay, that's perfect. Because I think what I want to do, I want to have this around here. Now, if I come to edit shape, I can add a pivot point. So if I add one of those in the middle, then look, it now pivots about that point. So therefore, I can try and turn this into a cable stayed bridge and sort of show you how the wires work on this. Keeping the load even, keeping the bridge hopefully upright. So for the color, this is just like a reinforced concrete block. So we'll go with something sort of concretey. And then anyone that's Mexican or perhaps knows Mexican bridges, they'll probably be able to guess from this point exactly what I'm doing. So I'm not actually going to have this touch the ground. So this bit isn't realistic, but the rest will be. I just want this to like show how, how a cable stay bridge works. So hopefully, yeah, that still spins around without touching the ground. Okay, that's good. So we basically want to take this node and go way up here. And we add another node sort of perpendicular like... Like that sort of thing. Add a curve down this edge. So we end up with something like that. Now, if we do that, you can see it, it does just fall over. Now, let's just move this to the right a bit. Okay, so if you haven't guessed it from this point, adding these two bits may do. Because basically, we're adding a circle in here. Presumably to make it a bit lighter, like in terms of weight. But also, it could be for architectural reasons that I'd rather not go into. So we've got a circle in the top end. We got another one down here. I mean, that's not actually the perfect circle, but I'm an engineer. I work in triangles and 90 degree angles. But now we are ready to go into the build mode. We can grab some road. 
do what we love to do, which is draw a line between there and there, and then say... <laughs> and then we are ready to add some cables to make this thing stay up. So first off, I need to add to this shape some joints. So one needs to go straight up from this anchor point. So if I just follow that up, we can shove that there. All the other ones go on this front edge, and they just go straight down in cables to hold the road up. So I think what I probably want to do is go from like the furthest cable and then with the grid off just do loads of parallel cables although they're not actually parallel to be fair yeah from looking at the photo i think what i need to do i need to space them along this edge evenly so if i just take like a block of wood there i can then just copy that down loads of times that will give us the spacing so basically i can just add joints to this custom shape along the spacing that i've done with the wood next to it so then we got this so if we press play everything will fall however if we then link via this anchor up to this cable and then go from here over to that piece of road, then what you should see happen... Yeah, look, it's holding itself up. Oh, I've just realized where I've made it thin. The nodes are floating. That's a bit strange. Still, we can then just go from each of these nodes holding the road up. Then if I just support this bit of road under here like that, because remember, this goes all the way through to the ground, so it does actually touch the ground. So I can, do, I can do that without it being cheating. But the way that this works is if that cable wasn't there, I imagine all these cables will pull this to the right. Even though it's leaning left, yeah. Can you see the weight of these, the weight of the roads? It pulls this thing up and to the right so it flaps over. So this cable anchors it down. So as this is trying to rotate to the right, the weight of that pulls on this cable, which is being held in place by this anchor down here. So when we press play now, oh, it actually holds... It actually holds, and the monster truck gets across. Oh, did you see the stress there? Oh, man. 99.81% stress. Let's uh, let's actually watch that with the stress on. So I imagine it was all in this cable. Yeah, can you see this is going redder and redder and redder? Because basically, this is acting as a lever arm. So in order to get this to pull the tightest, you just need to go as far away from it as you can to get a bit of, a bit of moment. And moment is like the the sort of rotational force. And you work that out by doing the force times the distance to the rotational point. And remember, I've got my rotating node in the background there. So that's a nice little test of how that works because you can literally see this force is getting higher and higher. There's a number down the bottom as we get further along. Nice. But in reality, this bridge is actually huge. So I may just scale this car down a little bit just so it looks like, yeah, it looks way bigger now. Okay, so now time to butcher the name of this. This is the Punte de la Unidad, a cantilevered cable stayed bridge in Mexico. Um, and although it is a sort of product of architecture, it's quite nice to see like how this actually works like in the game and uh, prove some engineering concepts. So that's quite cool. It's a shame that you can't like tell the cables to like come narrower because that would look a lot better. That is the downside of building these bridges in Polybridge. But yeah, cool little bridge that. And remember, if you want your bridge added to the Wheel of Bridge tune, then uh, be sure to comment any suggestions below and I'll try and add them to the list. But for now, I'll say peace, love, and bridges. Bye, guys!